What's up, everybody? I'm Brett. He's Hunter. Hey, guys. It's me, Hunter. That's yeah. Brett. You got to sound more seductive. Yeah, you, you do. You do. Hey, guys. It's me, Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> talk, talk real close into her. You're like trying to you're trying to get those fans. I'm like doing the ASMR. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's going on, Brett? Going all right? Not a lot. Yeah, no, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm pretty. I'm really excited for today's episode. I'm really excited for the for the rest of this uh, week that's coming up. I'm, I'm I'm in a good mood. Yeah, man, you're on that like. How many days off do you have here? I got four in a row. Four, in maybe a row. five. I don't know if they're going to give me Sunday. They probably won't. <laughs> but <laughs> but if they do, it'll be it'll be a full five days of you're, not having to work. You're on that first day off of like a multiple day off binge. Yeah. You're on that high. Yeah, you know? yeah. Alyssa will always make fun of me, like, whenever I get out of work and I know I have the next few days off, like, mm-hmm. it's totally different vibe than whenever I, I know I have to work the next yeah. day. Like, I'll leave I'll leave work and just, like, not listen to music. I'll just listen to podcasts mm-hmm. and, you know, have the volume turned down, drive slow, mm-hmm. but it's like the weather's nice yeah. and I got the next few days off, windows are down, blasting music, totally different vibe. Mm-hmm. But uh, tell everybody what uh, what our episode is planned for today here. Today's episode is one that I'm so excited for. We are doing fan casts. We are telling you guys who we'd like to see play some of our favorite characters. Um, pretty exciting stuff. Pretty exciting stuff. I'm, I mean, I'm sure everyone knows. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly positive almost every human being has done a bit of fan casting in their day. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm sure everyone's had a thought and they're like, oh, you know what? That guy would make a pretty good, uh, this character. W- w- without even realizing. Yeah, it, right? right? Yeah. Not, not even consciously. Just like, oh, yeah. That guy would play, a, that guy would play a mean <laughs> wubsy. Wubsy? Yeah. You, you know, Wow Wow Wubsy. Did well, you ever I, watch I've, that? I've heard the term. I don't, uh, don't think I could uh, point out Wow Wow Wubsy in a crowd. No. <laughs> <laughs> there's a little there's a little guy trying yeah, to get, trying something to get going me over there um there was a bug in my in my hair we have all these critters uh guests on our podcast i got had, i got gnats in my room i gotta get gnat traps we had a we just bought a uh little machine that you plug in the wall it's called mm-hmm. a zevo and it it sucks up gnats and stuff oh wow i haven't seen a gnat since we got it so well then it's doing its job oh they're all in your light <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i don't need to replace that light the light didn't burn out it's just blocked out by all the dead bugs <laughs> yeah. um yeah so we're gonna do a fan casting episode here might end up being a little bit lighter of an episode uh, yeah we don't have anything to review particularly um we're gonna discuss you know the typical brett and hunter discussions mm-hmm. brett has all the info on cool pop culture shit that uh has been brought up in the recent news and then i react <gasps> okay. wow that's crazy brett yeah, no doubt. Uh, I know last episode I said that I wanted to talk some about Andor. I was going to get around to watching it. And uh, so I kind of didn't get around to watching <laughs> Andor. Um, I watched a couple episodes and they were really good, but I've been on Midnight Shift and it's just difficult for me to watch anything or do anything at all whilst being on Midnight Shift. So everybody just cut me a little bit of slack. Uh, I'm sure that Nobody was anticipating me talking about it anyway. He's he's out here doing his best. This this man, he's a very hard working man out yeah. there in the coal mines, breathing in all that coal dust. <laughs> yeah. Co- coming sure. home to coming home to the baby. Yeah, no doubt. He's uh he doesn't have time for, for the Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> Yeah. I can't wait to go to bed r- literally right now. As soon as we're doing the podcast, I'm going to bed. <laughs> yeah. Um but anyways, uh, She-Hulk. Uh, yeah, still going good. Um, every episode better than the last. Yeah, uh, I saw something about Daredevil. Yeah, well, eventually he's coming soon. I, I think they, they, I think they did a really funny thing here. I don't know if they did it on purpose, but uh, you know, they put Daredevil in, in some of that marketing. Mm-hmm. And um, we're only we're down to the last two episodes of the of the whole season, and he hasn't shown up yet. <laughs> Yeah. Um and and he is going to show up. I'm confident he'll show up, but I think I think it's really, you know, cuz all the all the fanboys on Twitter that are like, "Oh, I hate this show. I'm just watching it for Daredevil." I, I feel like they might have they might have over uh advertised him on purpose. Yeah. To be like, "Well, why are you here? Huh? Why are you here? <laughs> what what's the name of this show? What's the name of this show?" Yeah. It's not Daredevil. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. You're wasting your time. Um but I don't even care. Because I love Jen for Jen, and she deserves better. If if you've seen if you've seen the most recent episode, you know what I mean. 
Justice for Jen. We love her. Uh, the only episode so far that's been kind of mid is the wedding episode. Um, wedding? She get married? No. Well, she went to a wedding. Uh, uh, one of her friends was getting married. And it, it still wasn't a bad episode. Just not a lot happened. I got you. You know, it, like the whole thing is just at this wedding. I got you. I got you. Uh, but no, still a great show. Still going strong. Almost over. Almost, uh, almost going to lose it, which is upsetting. But after that, we get Werewolf by Night. So Yeah, I'm pretty excited you know. about that. And then Black Panther... You know, Marvel. Marvel's really good at, at making sure, almost a little too good at making sure you always have something from them to watch. Yeah. Every month of every year. Well, they I got mean, something coming out. Uh, supply and demand. You know, they demand certain things, and or we demand as an audience mm-hmm. to see certain things, and they supply them. Now, granted, in the last few years, Marvel's been uh, not up to snuff with everything, but it's almost like they like you said pumped out too much stuff yeah, it's like yeah. an overindulgence almost. I, I do think they should slow down it's like I think we like they chocolate benefit from it it's like you like chocolate mm-hmm. but when you eat too much chocolate yeah. you get sick of it yeah so i can agree with that mm-hmm. something interesting marvel is doing though. oh yeah um talk about the the deadpool 3 news yeah ryan reynolds dropped a bombshell on us after we were waiting for anything on deadpool 3 uh and and it was a doozy he made sure that he came out swinging Hugh Jackman will be returning to the role of Wolverine one last time to go on a buddy road trip with Deadpool yeah. in Marvel Studios' Deadpool 3, which also now has a release date of uh, September... I want to say 24th. I think it was September 24th of 2024. Maybe it was 26th of 2024. 2020, yeah. The year is definitely 2024, which would make this... The um, month is definitely September, too. Yeah, it's definitely September of 2024, not 100% clear on the date. Doesn't matter much. It's it's a ways off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> when it gets a little closer, we'll we'll start remembering what day it comes out. Yeah. Um which places it, I believe in phase 6. Hmm. Cuz we're in phase 5. Well, we're still in phase 4 right now, I think. And then phase 5 will start to roll out and then the 2024 2025 stuff mm-hmm. will be phase 6. Uh, other movies in Phase Six include uh, both new Avengers movies and the Fantastic Four. So Deadpool Three's uh, going up right alongside those guys. Okay, so yeah, we uh, we're pretty excited about Deadpool. I mean, always excited about Deadpool. Um, I think that's one of the biggest characters in Marvel for both of us. Maybe. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, no. I I, I love me some Deadpool. Um, that first that first movie uh, in 2016 was holds a special place in my heart uh, besides the fact that it's Deadpool because that was the first time. Well, I saw it on my birthday because it came out uh, the day after my birthday, February. Yeah, it came out February 12th, so I saw it for my birthday. I remember going on Valentine's Day with Alyssa yeah. to see it. Well, my dad pulled me out of school early so we could go see it unobstructed by anyone else trying to see it. Yeah, because it was the day it came out, uh, and that started a tradition of of when a new big profile superhero movie that we wanted to see would come out. Dad would come and uh, take me out of school at lunchtime, yeah. and we'd go see it. Uh, so that so that was uh, that that movie that movie's real special to me because that that started like a little tradition thing that we did. That movie is the last movie that I went to see in theaters twice. Yeah, I have not since uh, had a second viewing of any theatrical release that I saw once. So. I see movies uh, multiple times constantly. So That's your I favorite thing. It, it really is. It's I, your I signature just, move. I enjoy uh, re-experiencing movies on the big screen. Right. Well, I mean... Because I feel like you got to enjoy them on that big screen while you can. Because I, I think watching movies on the big screen enhances your experience no matter what the quality of said film is. Oh, for sure. If it's terrible, it's at least watchable it's, if it's, you watch it in the theater. It's sort of the same effect with live music. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're like exactly when they have right. like little concerts at Palantine, they don't have to be good. I just enjoy yeah. live performances of anything. I tell Alyssa that all the time. Mm-hmm. That it's just fun to go see live music. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I think you already said something about Werewolf by Night. That looks really cool. Yeah. We already talked about that a little bit in the last episode. When does that release specifically? Mm, it's real soon. It's it's October something. I'll look it up. Something else that we were discussing earlier, speaking of October releases, is uh, on Netflix, they have an anthology series coming out. Um, 
pinned by it's not all pinned by Guillermo del Toro, but uh, it is his. What's the word I'm looking for? His he's the uh, father of the project. It's mm-hmm. uh, it's his brainchild. Yes, his brainchild. Thank you very much. October seventh for Werewolf by Night. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, that's yeah. Real, that's soon. real soon. Real soon. That's real soon. Two days. Yeah. Um. Excited for that. But uh, the anthology series, uh, Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities, mm-hmm. uh, comes out later on this month. I'm really excited about that too. I think Netflix does really good with uh, little niche prod. Uh, yeah niche projects mm-hmm. like that uh we, we've talked before about how much we both enjoy love death and, yeah. Bro- and robots mm-hmm. so hoping for more of that kind of flavor mm-hmm. with that and and on the specifically horror end of their uh of their niche little side things i didn't uh specifically watch this one but i heard uh that fear street that i heard that was pretty good it was um i i don't think i think some people overrated it a little bit but in in a whole it's mm-hmm. just fun slasher horror stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it has the certain formula and kind of sticks to it. It's got it throws you a couple little curveballs that are interesting. I think you would really like it. It looks like something I'd be interested in. I just haven't gotten around. You know, you should definitely the, check it out on the list of the billion things I haven't got around to watching. You should definitely check it out. Just being that it's October now. That and is true. You know, that is true. It's spooky season. I, if I ever had an excuse to watch it, it'd be now. <laughs> it's this month. You can't watch it on November first. <laughs> no, Not allowed. They take it away. It's illegal. You, they you will send the FBI to your home if you, they catch you. You literally can only Fear watch. Street. You can only watch horror movies in October, November first to the end of November. You're not allowed to watch anything. Yeah, and then on December no first, you get to start watching Christmas movies. I think that's an untapped market. I think Thanksgiving <laughs> movies is a is a is something they should really uh, play into. You know, I can't really think of a whole a whole lot of Thanksgiving themed films. <laughs> they don't exist. Uh, there's probably some. There's We're just the, not thinking of there's them. There's Thanksgiving Charlie Brown. It's a classic. But there's one. <laughs> <laughs> We're really racking up the list here. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, spooky season, October. Uh, our next podcast will definitely be a horror movie. Oh, just yeah. FYI for everybody. So get ready for that. Get your uh, teddy bears and your flashlights. Because it's going to be a scary as fuck episode oh yeah we're we're gonna we're gonna scare your pants off yeah just kidding i'm not we're gonna jump scare you through your speakers if if anybody gets scared it's me um all right uh moving on to a couple other little bits and bobs here uh we just watched the trailer for violent night yes a movie that uh, is coming out in december Mm -hmm. and very early december december 2nd yeah it kind of uh Kind of already might be a Christmas classic in my eyes. Oh, that was yeah. a pretty cool trailer. Oh no, dude, it, it it looks really good. Um, so the premise of Violent Night for those of you who have no idea what we're talking about, <laughs> um, David Harbor, uh, is Santa Claus. Yeah, and this uh this rich family's home is being uh robbed by some very bad men, and so naturally it is Santa's job. Uh, to kick the shit out of them. <laughs> it was almost like Santa meets Die Hard, like the plot. Yeah, of, it's a like the bit. plot of Die Hard, like it trying to break up a is. bank robbery, yeah. a vault, you know, a vault robbery. Yeah, but um, we've got John Leguizamo as the as the main bad guy. It seems, yeah. and then of course David Harbor as uh, as Santa. And then something I know is I don't know the guy's name. But yeah, if any, I don't if any of you guys have watched The Boys. Uh, the guy who plays Translucent, who I've never seen in anything before The Boys or since until right now, is uh, playing the father of the family. Uh, but no, it, it looks really good. It knows. It looks like we were talking about it earlier. Mm-hmm. It looks like it knows exactly what it is. Uh, there's a line in particular uh, where David Harbour <laughs> Santa says, it's time for some season's beatings. Yeah, and and I love how like it just totally hones in on like, He's got the he's sharpening the candy cane, yeah, and with stabbing his, yeah. the guy, gouging him with it, and uh, I think he, at one point he electrocuted somebody with a uh, a Christmas star. Yeah, yeah. by sho- he shoves it in their eye and then he electrocutes them with it. Yeah, it looked it looked pretty uh, pretty fun. Yeah, that's definitely one uh, I'm gonna want to see in the theaters. And um, uh, also uh, producers or writers or somebody yeah, involved. Yeah. The people who worked on both uh, Nobody, a movie I haven't seen, mm-hmm. and Bullet Train, a movie that I adore, yeah. uh, are, are involved in this, which means already off the bat, so, you know it's going to be the action at least. Yeah. Uh, we know is going to be uh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, moving on to another trailer we literally just watched. Uh, me for the first time, Brett had already seen it, is uh, the second trailer for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, this trailer, I mean, the first trailer was dope. This one, I think, was equally, if not more dope because mm-hmm. it showed us a little bit more. Yeah, I feel like the first trailer was more so... Emotionally dope. Yeah, the, the first one was <laughs> makes was sense. definitely more so a tribute to Chadwick than it was right. like a movie trailer. Right. This one uh, still has those elements, but this one's definitely more so trying to sell you the movie yeah. than uh, than his memory. They, they, they give us a little bit more appetizer yeah. with this. Um, we get to see Namor mm-hmm. a little more. And I, I don't know if I touched on this in the last podcast or not but i think it's so cool that he is like aztec background yeah, or yeah it's really background. cool um i love that kind of cultural influence that that cultural installation mm-hmm. installation rather it was just a cool addition to his character right right and that that's something that uh there's so much lore mm-hmm. already existing yeah. in is you know aztecs and, and their history mm-hmm. um so I really, really think that's so awesome. We got to see Namor's little fluttering. <laughs> yeah, he's got his wings. he's got his wing feet. Yeah, that, that's something that's actually like really goofy, but just it works. With yeah, him. yeah. Like, you just you just because it's just one of those things you just roll with it. Oh, he's got wings on his feet. He flies with them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we we got to uh, see uh, Shuri's suit, mm-hmm. and it looks pretty good. Looks pretty I'm, good. I'm 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 a fan. Um, I wasn't a big fan. I was talking to Hunter about it. I'm not a huge fan of the uh, of the suit they gave. Uh, T'Challa after Civil War just because the Civil War suit was already so good and the suit he wears in Black Panther in my opinion uh, was just a just a total downgrade it looks kind of it looks cheap yeah you know it looks like it's just like a morph suit that you would buy it, like it just looked printed and then yeah. the helmet was a little big for him so it looked, he got like he had like a weird like morph suit bobblehead sort of thing going on so I wasn't a huge fan of that one, but they 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 fixed that with this one. This one looks more akin to the Civil War one with just like the texturing and the details, yeah, uh, as opposed to just looking like a like a a, a morph suit for the I, third I, time. I love how I can't, there's no synonyms for morph suit. Dude, morph suits are like low key fire though. If you if you need uh, a kind of cool Halloween costume last second, like, oh for sure for sure. Run but to for Party us, City not and like get it, you know, in a big budget movie. Oh no 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 doubt, no. but. Uh, here I am trying to defend morph suits. <laughs> yeah, Hunter was a uh, morph suit Captain America. Dude, that costume was fire. I don't care what anybody says. I look, no, you, you pulled it off. I looked swag. That was that was back in my day when I was still fit. Um, anyways, uh, I also just think that the whole world of Wakanda and what uh, you know the first Black Panther film created is so creative and interesting mm-hmm. and yeah. unique. Um, you know, Wakanda is city is technology, and I think a lot of things in this trailer were just interesting looking. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Yeah, and it comes up so soon. Yeah, November 11th. I I didn't realize it. It didn't dawn on me that that's so close. Yeah, it popped until up. Until we watched I was like, that trailer. Yeah, I was like, this November. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. Yeah, November 11th. That doesn't strike me as a November movie. No, not. I really. feel like it should be like a beginning of summer, or like or midsummer, like big movie yeah you know? i would i would think maybe june when did the first black panther come out i'm not sure hmm. interesting yeah uh smaller smaller mcu news uh for anyone who was following armor wars <laughs> all all three of you uh armor wars has been upgraded this is the first time this has ever happened armor wars has been upgraded from a disney plus original series to a full-on theatrical mcu movie uh so uh, what we know about Armor Wars so far is that it's it's about uh, Rhodey as War Machine, uh, and I think he's like fighting the government because they want to because yeah. they want to use Iron Man suits again. What a cool! And I plot. think I think Justin Hammer's coming back. Yeah, from uh, from Iron Man two two was it was he was in two? Yeah, he was the best part of Iron Man two. Right, right, because he worked with Whiplash. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, so yeah, so now it's a movie. So I can't remember the actor's name that plays as Justin Hammer, but he is such a good actor. He's yeah, a, he's, he's really funny, really eccentric. Mm-hmm. Um, I I enjoy him. Was um, he in The Hangover? I feel like he was. Uh, I feel like wasn't he the nerdy guy in The Hangover? No, 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 no. two different guys. Yeah, he was not in The Hangover. No, 
But um, yeah, that, that 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 that's interesting to me. I don't want to sound like a hater because I think War Machine is really cool. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, the actor Don Cheadle is really like uh, boring. Uh, I don't mind him. I think he is, just looks like the nicest guy in the world. Like, yeah, he, he just I don't, I don't know. I, he I just looks I, boring to me. I think I have the opposite problem as you because I like Don Cheadle a lot, but I just um, he's a great actor. Just he's, what they've done with War Machine so far is it hasn't been super interesting. Yeah, he probably should have just died. He's just kind of around. So. Yeah, <laughs> they they never want to kill anybody. Um, but anyways, unless it's their villains, <laughs> no no Marvel villain ever survives. Well, I mean they, they I guess they should. Uh, Loki survives everything. Yeah. Well, now he's stuck outside of time. Loki season two is happening. I don't know if we talked about that last episode. A tra- that trailer that they showed at D twenty three for Loki season two got leaked online. Uh, and it looks pretty good. It looks. It looks. Well, I already really liked Loki. Um, still need to watch. <laughs> you still haven't watched it, nah, dude. Nah. You gotta. Uh, here I am with my nerdy podcast, and I haven't, yeah, watched, haven't watched like the best Disney Plus. Yeah, the best MCU one series. so far, besides She Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't watched that one either. Um, I will always be repping. All right, so moving on here. Uh, one other trailer that I threw at Brett that uh, I figured we should talk about some. Um, I've never played this video game series, The Last of Us. Mm. Um, have you? Have you played? You've played The Last of yeah, Us. Yeah, one and you? two. Okay, yep. yeah. Um, Great you know, games. Yeah, highly regarded. Fantastic uh, game franchise, and uh, that trailer for the HBO original series looks really, really good. Man. Oh, it looks fantastic. Pedro Pascal. Um, is a great choice for Joel. David Harbour should fire his agent and go get Pedro Pascal's yeah. agent. <laughs> Pedro Pascal, everything Dude, he touches is gold. Pedro Pascal. Yeah, he's we, a great we love actor. that guy. Great yeah, actor. did you watch um did you watch The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent? No, I did Neither not. Neither did I. I wanted to so bad and yeah. I could not find the time to the go movie see looks it. Sick. It yeah. looks really funny. Yeah. I really need to watch it. It's probably out on something now. Yeah, I bet it is. To go watch or rent. We'll, okay. we'll 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 hunt it down, yeah. seek it down, and we'll we'll watch it eventually. Um, yeah, but uh, I I think that looks really really good. I like the music that they use in the trailer, and apparently that's from the game series. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. It was used in a was is it used in the game or is it from a trailer that the game had back in the day? Maybe I believe it was in the game. Okay, I could be wrong on that though. Yeah, I just love the whole vibe of that movie. Mm-hmm. It gave me like such a... Have you ever seen 28 Days Later? No. It gave me a very 28 Days Later vibe, which is a good thing. That's a great like zombie uh, apocalypse yeah. movie. And uh, the clickers look gross. Yeah. Dude. They're just gross. Uh, there's this really funny TikTok Ugh. I saw, and it was like when the zombie apocalypse starts and it starts looking more like the last of us than zombie land. <laughs> and it was in the guy like, just like drove his car off of a bridge. Yeah. They're, they're nasty. It's I, like, I'm not dealing with that. I'm not equipped for that. I can remember, uh, seeing, I think it's the second game. There's a boss called the rat King. Yes. Yeah. That's gross yeah. too. Yeah. That guy sucked. Do you know that a rat King is an actual like term? I always thought it was just like something people use as a phrase that like, you're the king of like bad things. I thought his name was weird because <laughs> he had nothing to do with rats. So a rat king is a uh, phenomenon that happens every now and then when a big rat's nest, a lot of rats get their tails tangled in a knot and cannot, you know, move separately. So they all roll around as one. Oh wow! That is what a rat king is. That's, it's a real. It's a that's thing. That's crazy. Yeah, it's not one thing. It's it kind of cool. We should enlist rat kings into the army. It's gross. Like, imagine if you just, like, saw, like, 12 rats yeah. rolling around and, like, trying to scurry <laughs> in multiple directions. They watched there. one episode of Voltron and it was over. I would set them on fire, <laughs> scoop up their ashes, and dig a hundred foot deep hole and bury it in there. Well, what, why? They're, no, they're it just... creeps me out, man. It's like a, uh, it's like a living Roomba. They, they all run around <laughs> as one and then nibble up all the dirt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're onto something there. Yeah, I'm, I'm patenting. I'm, I'm putting a patent on it. <laughs> you're just going to start catching rats the and rat tying their Roomba. tails in knots. <laughs> yeah. Go, go ahead, little fella. Go clean. Yeah, then they just like go bite someone and give them black plague. <laughs> yeah. All 12 of them bite the ankle individually. <laughs> they sp- <laughs> Their tails are tied in the center and they all have to... They have to sp- it's like a Beyblade of rat bites. A Beyblade of rats. <laughs> Um, okay, yeah, so Last of Us, that, that shit looks dope. Um, mm, we did uh, think we were going to have some Mario movie yeah. news. That didn't happen. That's postponed till what, tomorrow? 
Yeah, tomorrow the trailer drops. Well, it wasn't postponed. I was just wrong. <laughs> oh, this was your opportunity to be right, Brett. Our seven listeners, they... they I know. I, know. Thought, I thought the Mario trailer was supposed to drop um, yesterday, and then it didn't because it was always supposed to drop tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, all right. But we did get a poster uh, yesterday, so... Complete coincidence. I, I I was I had I was completely wrong, but they we did still get something on the fourth. The poster um, looks good. I think it looks good. I think it looks good. Um I small confession, uh hot take. I've always been cautiously optimistic for this movie. Yeah. Obviously when the cast got announced, everyone was well, even when the studio got announced, I don't know if you knew this, not a lot of people like Illumination. They That's think, crazy. They think their movies are bad. Really? They think after the first Despicable Me, uh, things just went downhill. So I was just telling Brett about how much yeah. I love... I don't love love it, but I I think that uh, Illumination Studios' uh, uh, Grinch movie is pretty good. Yeah, well, see, a lot of people didn't like it. That's crazy. See, but but I think I, it's good. I think it's cute. The, the first Despicable Me, the first Sing, and Minions, I think are all good. I have Despicable Me, two and... Despicable Me 2, I didn't see. I did not see 3 either. I'm pretty sure there's a third one. And I haven't seen Minions 2. And I haven't seen Sing 2. And I saw half of The Grinch. (laughs) Alyssa saw Sing 2 and she said it was good. A lot of of people were saying it was good. But here's my thing with it, right? With with people thinking that the Mario movie is not going to be good. I think it has to be good. Yeah. Right? I think because, uh, if you recall, they made a live action Mario movie. In the nineties, yeah, starring uh, John Leguizamo yeah, as he Luigi, was Luigi, which yeah. was a great casting choice. Right. Uh, but that movie was god awful, terrible. Have you ever seen that? Yes, I have. Have you really? Yes. Yeah, I've never seen it. Oh, it's it's <laughs> it's it's a it's a fun movie to laugh at, but it is a bad movie. Yeah. Um, and that is because Nintendo didn't have a lot of say in it, right? Mm-hmm. At the time, they were like, "Oh, hey, yeah, sure, you can make a Mario movie. We don't care." But then they got big and they're like, we can't let that happen again. Which is why you haven't seen any adaptations of Nintendo properties for the past couple of decades. I get, they were, I get what you're getting at. Yeah, because they were so burned by that first Mario movie that they didn't want to try again. Yeah. And now they're trying again. And I do not believe they would let the same thing happen twice. Yeah, that's why there is no Nintendo properties uh, ad- adap- adapted. <laughs> adapted to film because they're so apprehensive to let the uh to put out a bad product exactly which because this movie is happening you know cast and all it's that's be still good. that's still a choice that they had to sign off on was honestly that cast. It, you know I, I was really behind didn't know all the cast when you read the cast off to me today i was like that's a pretty stout cast yeah no man. it's it's most of them aren't actually as bad as like chris pratt as mario is weird but yeah. like charlie day as luigi is great Jack Black as Bowser is phenomenal. Yeah, that's epic. And as much as... Uh, I love Jack Black. As much as I love ragging on Seth Rogen, there is no one better they could have chosen to play Donkey Kong than him. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. Yeah. To be honest. So, you know, honestly, like, it's funny because it's like, oh, look at all the celebrities in the Mario movie. But, like, I, I, think, I think they did it for a reason. I yeah. think this movie, at best... You know, at worst, it's going to be mediocre. Mm-hmm. But I do not think Nintendo would let them make a bad Mario movie again after, you know, being so afraid of it for so many years because of that first one. Why do people not like Illumination Studios movies? Do they not like the animation? Because I think the animation looks really good. They just think they're too... They they think Illumination makes, like, the kinds of kids' movies that, like, you make fun of, like, with the fart jokes and the... <laughs> And the uh, well, I could see that with minions and despicable yeah, media. Yeah, and, and people don't like that. They they want their children's media to be a bit more sophisticated. I, got <laughs> I suppose. I got Which you. I mean, I agree. I think I think fart jokes should. I don't think I've ever seen a good fart joke. <laughs> You're wrong. There's definitely good fart jokes in the world. Well, I mean, I'm sure there's a couple, but not from Illumination. I mean, <laughs> I got you. Um, but I think I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be a fun movie. Um. Uh, so in this poster that we were talking about, uh, we just see the back of Mario. He's facing the uh, kingdom, which looks great. Mushroom kingdom. Yeah, the whole thing looks fan. It's like super fleshed out. Yeah. Really a big fan of that. But um, uh, McDonald's, uh, which I'm assuming is going to get toys to promote it, obviously. Right. Uh, an advertisement uh, leaked out of Mario's full design from the front. And you'll never believe this, guys. 
he looks like Mario. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was another thing people were worried about because uh, some people don't like Illumination's art style like you were talking about. And they were afraid that they were going to like Despicable Me eyes all the Mario characters and like put them in that Illumination style. Yeah. Uh, but it looks kind of like they did the opposite and they, they took the Illumination style and they Nintendoized it. I feel like that uh, Illumination them, style, now that you uh, bring it up, is like... Uh, you always have like unproportioned characters, yeah. like skinny arms yeah. and legs and a mm-hmm. fat body, or yeah. like skinny bottom half and yep. then get extremely broad up top, yep. or just over exaggerated features. Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly what it is. That sometimes works, but yeah, I get what you're saying yeah. with illumination because mm-hmm. now that I think of it, like the Grinch in that movie, yeah, just has a fat gut, yeah, and skinny arms and legs, mm-hmm. yeah. So, um, but I think I think with Nintendo being as hands-on as they are with their properties now mm-hmm. I, I don't think there's any way that they're gonna let this movie be that bad All right so i'm excited i i do want to hear chris pratt's mario voice though i'm i'm excited and and also scared because it's gonna be hilarious i almost i, I, I almost don't want to hear like now that you're bringing it up it's mm-hmm. gonna be like just chris pratt trying to do a mario voice it's well, gonna be funny well i'm really hoping because they're because they're putting a lot of uh a lot of um, mystery behind it like chris pratt's mario right. voice like he made a whole post about like wait till you guys hear the voice i've been working with a coach and what if it's you know, ju- been... what if it's literally just him like doing chris pratt voice? that's what i'm saying right <laughs> what if they put all this hype behind it and then he talks and it's would, just chris pratt i would i would like i would like rather him just do that i think i'm hoping they go the uh, gruff brooklyn air uh angle with Mario, because most of the stuff that's not the games, that's what they do with them, right? right. In the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, mm-hmm. um, both in the animated portions and the live action portions, they would do. You know, he was like, he was like, he was Italian, but he wasn't like wahoo, let's go Italian. He was like, hey, I'm walking in like New York Italian, <laughs> uh, which I love, and I really want Chris Pratt. I yeah. really want Mario to hop up, and he's like, Luigi, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> That, that, yeah, yeah, I like that. I'm excited for this. So, so you, I'm, you've made me more excited so, um, just listening to you give your theories. Yeah. Here. So, um, um, you know, there's a lot of ways they could go with it. We'll find out tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I am, I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm, I'm gonna go see it. It's gonna be good. Super duper excited for sure. Well, Brett, uh, do you want to uh, maybe? Eh, get into a little fan casting yeah, stuff. Yeah. Let's jump into a little fan casting. I didn't have a good segue. No, I. Their segues are dumb. Uh, if there's, if the opportunity presents itself for a oh, good well, one, yeah, well, I'm jumping all over. Oh, it. I know. Like if we actually had Not some. Not like the concept of segues are dumb. It's just they're dumb to figure out. If we actually had like some Spawn movie news to go off of. Yeah, right. I was going to use the John Le- John Leguizamo segue. Do you know the John? Le- he was the violator in the 1997 Spawn movie. Was he? Yeah, That's the little crazy. fat clown guy. I love John Lig. Lig was fuck. He's got one of the names, <laughs> man. <laughs> well, I love him, and I think he should be in more stuff. He's I say a, that about a lot of people. He's and Italian. Like tons of stuff that I just haven't seen, and I'm like, oh, well, obviously that means they're not in any movies if I haven't seen them. John Lig was almost got that like big long Italian name, mm-hmm. you know? but it works for him. It's great. He's got that. Uh, new york accent <laughs> yeah that's what I, yeah that's what i'm saying that's what they need to do that's why he was peak as luigi dude it's true it's true they should have brought him back that i know i do man. love charlie day though charlie day is luigi's great casting i mean that'll probably that'll probably work for luigi mm-hmm. um and and charlie day can be funny i think he's kind of annoying sometimes man well definitely on it's always sunny which is what sometimes like, that's he, he goes thing. from funny to <laughs> yeah and i just yeah, yeah i can't handle it mm-hmm. but uh i think it'll be good all right well i think we agree on that we, we do i uh, rambled on long enough about the uh the mario movie so i think you should lead us off with uh with some fan cast uh, me First? yeah 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 you're gonna you're gonna kick us off okay so just uh a disclaimer for everyone i'm a lot worse at this than uh brett is um brett is just smarter than me okay it, it, in case you guys haven't figured that I out, I disagree. Yet. But so, all right, I'm going to jump into my first one that I put a stamp on. I hammered down on this one right off the bat. I already told Brett this one. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a fan of the actor Adam Brody. He played in um, Ready or Not, which I actually have another actor from that film. Oh yeah, in here, yeah. Um, 
but he played in Ready or Not most recently as uh, one of the brothers. And then he also um, was in Jennifer's Body, and he was in some Gossip Girl or some goofy, I don't know, girl show that I didn't watch. <laughs> uh, but he was some heartthrob in. Anyways, I think he has this very like sarcastic, mm, slacker-esque tone that he mm-hmm. portrays in a lot of uh, his movies. And he's tall, dark-haired, handsome. I think he would make a great Spike Spiegel mm-hmm. if they made a live-action film of it. Um, I know what they were going with with the Netflix series with John Cho. Um, and I do think John Cho is a good actor. I feel like he was a little too old for the role. Mm-hmm. A little bit. And I feel like it, maybe this is me like having a bad perception, but... Uh, if you watch the anime of Cowboy Bebop, Spike Spiegel doesn't even look like he is uh, Asian. Yeah, a lot of people... that That's a thing a lot of people do with anime is because, like... Like, it can be set anywhere, but because the show's from Japan, then they just we just automatically assume all the characters must also be of Asian descent. But that's not always the case with, with, with that kind of... Like, a lot of the times it is. There is yeah. a lot of anime that, you know... Obviously, it's going to take place in Japan because the people who made it well, live in Japan. I, you know, I think you need to use a little sense there. Like, uh, if you were making a uh, live-action Naruto, mm-hmm. like Sasuke is definitely yeah. you know yeah. Japanese. Mm-hmm. Naruto, even though he's got, got blonde hair, yeah. you know, he's Japanese. Definitely. But like, I just, I just don't think that Spike Spiegel, you know, is Japanese. I think the the casting Netflix is doing for the uh, One Piece live-action show is is a lot more in line of instead of like I didn't even see this. When's the, when is this happening? Uh, do you like One Piece? I dabble in it a little bit. Uh, when I was young, I remember reading Shonen Jump and loving, uh, yeah. loving Rowano Zoro. I mm-hmm. thought he was the coolest character. Like, sword in the mouth, dude. Oh, uh, yeah. That's swag. Yeah, well, well, the casting they're doing for that is a lot more in line of like, well, can, does this person, you know, encapsulate this role as instead of like, they gotta be Asian because it's an anime. Yeah. So... I, I think I think they're they're doing good. I I like John Cho's um as Spike, but I do agree that he was a little a little a little on the you know he's getting up there. I think that's the biggest qualm I had with him being yeah. cast is just that he's kind of old. <laughs> I don't see Spike. That's the, that's the problem with the, with the passage of time. You got all these great actors that are just yeah getting older. Yeah, I I, I see Spike being maybe mid 30s yeah definitely uh really probably younger than that yeah i was thinking like early 30s i was thinking high 20s really yeah (laughs) (laughs) Hmm, somebody here's 29 oh maybe portray him but yeah so uh adam brody i think would be a dope spike spiegel but he also is getting up there in age so that time has passed Mm -hmm. that ain't gonna happen Brett, moving on to you. Who you got for your first one all right for my well I'll, i'll save my teams for later just to to keep it uh interesting to keep it interesting but uh this is this is one that i've sworn by my entire life i've <laughs> always thought this what it's just funny like I, this this one right here is the most concrete set in stone one no it is it is this okay. is the one i Lay talk about this constantly you can ask dad every single time i see this actor i bring up the fact that i think he should be this character uh, and the saddest part about this one is that it'll never happen. Yeah. All right. Tom Hardy as Wolverine is a casting choice that should be put in the record books as the saddest thing that's never happened. Should have happened already. Right. But obviously it can't. Tom Hardy's Venom. I feel like that's one that I've seen a lot of people but make that statement. Because it's true. Yeah. It's yeah. true. Tom Hardy is a fantastic actor. I Everybody love says it because it's true. I love I love Tom Hardy so much and everything he's in. Mm-hmm. But he has everything you would need for Wolverine. He's got the build. He's short. Yeah. He's got the gruff. You know that he like when he grows a beard. And he's just he's just such a scraggly guy. <laughs> like I could just imagine. I could just see so vividly in my head him in like either just like. A, a full on like the suit or just like you know the wife beater with the jeans but just him mm-hmm. with the claws mm-hmm. just going berserk you know and it's just it's so heartbreaking that it'll never happen so recently i saw on twitter that um tom hardy was in some uh martial arts competition yeah, yeah. He, he he did you see his pictures from where a, he won yeah like uh 
and he had this like beard mm-hmm. that he grew out, and yeah. it looks like a Wolverine. That's what I'm beard. saying. Th- it's like it's like lamb chops on his cheeks. Yes, <laughs> Tom Hardy was born to play Wolverine, but the timelines just didn't intersect. Uh, and it's it it breaks my heart every single day <laughs> that he is not on screen with those claws out. Tom Hardy, please find a way. <laughs> it's one of like the the greatest robberies uh, of the world. We were we were robbed of Tom Hardy as Wolverine. I mean, just that's just like a badass. Like, yeah, he's he's the ultimate. I have, guy no, to play I have Wolverine. no other picks for the character. I don't. I I whenever like it's either Hugh Jackman or it's Tom Hardy. I'm sure if the MCU finds another one, uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. They're usually really good with casting. Their yeah. casting directors are top notch. Mm-hmm. But to me, it'll always Tom Hardy's the one and only. I've seen a lot of fan casting. Uh, want Taron Egerton? Yeah, that's another good one. Well, I want to stray don't away. Think he's big enough. I, I think he's a little too young looking. That like, too. I, I that don't too. like. Oh, let's do a young Wolverine. What do you mean a young Wolverine? Wolverine wasn't Wolverine until mm-hmm. he went through the Weapon X program. Yeah. So. I do think. Well, it's not even his fault because he is. He is older. He's like. He's like mid thirties now. He doesn't I think. look old. Though. No, he's got a baby face. <laughs> yeah, that, that's his problem. Yeah, yeah you're you're too good looking, Taron Egerton. Yeah, Taron Egerton. I love you. I love Taron Egerton. Put him in more stuff. He he could he, like if, he was somebody I was searching for a mm-hmm, role for, yeah. and I couldn't really find one. And if he was Wolverine, I think he would do a great job. Uh, but he does have he does have a very youthful face, mm-hmm. which which wouldn't super work for the character. I agree. So I totally concur. Mm-hmm. On your uh, Tom Hardy as yes. Wolverine, as I'm sure 95 percent of the world will. Yeah, it's not. It's not. A, it's not an out there pick, but it is the correct one. <laughs> You're right. You're exactly right. You know, sometimes, sometimes the general public just is right, <laughs> and we have to accept that. Um, okay, so on to my next one here. Um, I'm not even sure if you're familiar with this actor. Actually, I think you are because we've had this discussion before. So I'm going to go to a video game cast. Oh, okay. If it was going to be adapted to a live action movie, we've talked about this character before. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dante from Devil May Cry. Yes. I'm not going to say the one that me and you both agreed on uh, in the past. Uh, I'm going to say Logan Learman. Oh, okay. The actor Logan Learman. Yeah, yeah. So he's got a little... I think it's Lerman. Lerman? Yeah. Okay. Well, that would make sense because Learman would maybe be... Too easy. Too easy. Yeah. (laughs) So Logan Lerman... Um, I feel That's like he. Pick. I feel like he is the perfect age to play like a Devil May Cry three, uh, time period Dante. Mm-hmm. He's got a little sword play in his yeah. filmography history because he was D'Artagnan in a Three Musketeers movie many moons ago. He was also Percy Jackson. I've never seen those. Uh, I heard they're pretty good though. Mm, they're good movies, but people who like the books don't like them because they're very. Now, didn't you know, they, they take did, a lot of liberties? Didn't they get like? There was only two of them made, yeah, and that's the reason why is because they just weren't making money after the second one. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but anyways, um, and upon like looking at pictures of Logan, mm-hmm. uh, he has like now naturally uh, yeah. grayish hair. Mm-hmm. Like he he does he's like my age, but yeah. he has gray hair already. Mm-hmm. So perfect for the role. Um, I think he would maybe. I I haven't really seen him in a whole lot of stuff. I know yeah. he was in Perks of Being a Wallflower which just looks like a really like nice cute movie where he's probably like a nice sweet person. Mm-hmm. So he's he's going to have to like learn how to say fuck a little more. <laughs> yeah. And like cut cut off people's limbs. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think uh that that's a good one. I think he'd be pretty cool. Can you can you jog my memory real quick? I know you said you weren't going to say it, but who did we agree on? Zac Efron. That's what it was. Zac Efron yeah. would be a cool Dante. He would. I and do he, think Logan Lerman already, is a better pick than him though. I I, I think so too. Yeah. Uh <laughs> I don't want to say Zac Efron's too old. He's not too old, but I think he's almost too big of a name. Yeah, he's too recognizable. Yeah. If he came out on screen, I wouldn't be like Dante. I'd be like, that's Zac Efron. That's almost like The Rock playing as like Black Adam. <laughs> well, The Rock almost benefits from nobody knowing who Black Adam is. Yeah, you know right. what I mean. Like if it was like The Rock as uh, Superman, mm-hmm. people would be like, that's just The Rock. Yeah, that's just that's just. <laughs> Why him? is The Rock wearing a red cape? <laughs> he looks dumb. This isn't the jungle. But yeah, I, I really, uh, I really like my pick there. That might be one of my that favorite was, ones. No, that was always. really good. Okay, go. That was a good one. Shoot I'm gonna, you I'm gonna, up, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna match you with a with a video game one. This is this is another one that I, uh, I don't talk about this one a lot, but it's it's one that I I've thought for a while. Um, Kratos from God of War. Mm-hmm. Dave Batista. Ooh. I think would do a really good Kratos. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Oh yeah. yeah, he's a unit. Now, granted, he kind of already plays Kratos. <laughs> 
Drax the Destroyer is ba- like even down to the backstory. Family was killed. Yeah, yeah man. he's basically just Kratos. Big dude covered in tattoos. Yeah. Okay. So it's not like super inspired. <laughs> it's just like putting him in that same role. It's like you but said he'd on your still last kill one. It, you it's like know? you said on your last one. I mean, if it's the right pick, it's yeah, the right pick. Yeah. I think I think if they were ever to do a live action God of War, I think Dave Bautista. Sorry, tripping over my words. Uh, I think Dave Batista would would do great in that role. And here's another thing about Dave Batista. Mm-hmm. You know, eight, ten years ago, he was already an actor, but he was a budding actor who basically was just playing big, dumb, muscle bound guy that kicks ass. Like, yeah. he really has chops now. Yeah. He was in yeah. Dune, he was in um, Blade Runner 2049. He's had lead roles. In movies that uh, were more serious Mm -hmm. in tone, Um, I I think he could carry God of War and also make it like more in line with you know the new the new games the new uh, the remake. Yeah, when I picture him in my head as Kratos, I do I do envision the 2018 you know older more grizzled Kratos. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do think he could still pull off the the original games Kratos, but I think he'd be best suited. For, I for, just feel like he's more nuanced now yeah. to be able to carry a movie mm-hmm. with actual like acting and emotion. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I think that's a great pick. Mm-hmm. Good job. Yes. Proud of you. Love this episode. Yeah, this is this is fun. <laughs> okay, this is another one that I already told you about, but I think this is a good one depending on what angle they would want to take the film. Mm-hmm. Um, and no gripe on uh, Mahershala Ali, but. I would like to see John Boyega play as Blade, mm. as a young Blade who is trying to, doesn't know what's going on with his life. He is a vampire. He is feeding, yeah. and it's him getting brought in by Whistler and learning how to cope with what he is and his upcoming as being, you know, the ultimate vampire slayer. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be awesome. I, th- I think that'd be really. I good. I think John Boyega is a badass. Oh, he's great. Um. I know I, he kind of plays a goofy, quirky yeah, I was character. Say, I don't know entirely if he could do that sort of that need, darker. You need to watch the movie Attack the Block. Oh, okay. It, it's um, I I have a John Boyega pick too, but it, it it's, it's it's more in line with his his lighter stuff. Okay, so Attack the Block. It came out in I want to say 2012, 2013. Mm-hmm. It's not an Edgar Wright movie, but it's got Simon Pegg and Nick Frost oh, both okay. in it. So it's about like. Uh, this group of inner city kids that live in this apartment complex and the apartment complex gets attacked by these aliens Uh and they're really goofy looking like almost like funny, like cartoony aliens, Mm -hmm. but the movie's really violent. Oh, okay. At one point, John Boyega's character, he's like uh, the bad kid that's been in and out of juvie Mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, but he leads all the other kids, like he rallies them to escape their Mm -hmm. apartment block and, you know, overcome these aliens and uh, at one point, somehow he ends up, I can't remember how, because it's been forever since me and Alyssa watched it, but he ends up with a katana. Oh, nice. Like somebody in the apartment block had a yeah. katana, and he has it, and he's like killing these. And the aliens, like their blood is like a uh, real fluorescent green. Mm. And like like I said, it almost looks like it's animated. The mm-hmm. blood does. So you need to watch that. You I, I, is it is that pre or post uh, Star Wars? Pre. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's young. He's oh, like, like real young yeah. John Boy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's and his like uh, British accent is super thick. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's a cool movie, man. Hmm. Uh, like I said, it's Edgar Wright didn't direct he it. He hasn't been in a lot recently. I miss no. him. No, he hasn't. But yeah, John Boyega as a young blade, I think would kick fucking ass. That's good. So I do like that. All, All right. right, we are. Let's do. I guess I only have one more that's not <laughs> my two teams. So we'll do Ghost Rider. I um I got two picks for Johnny Blaze and then I've got one for Robbie Reyes. My man's got three separate picks for one character. <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> not um, really though. Not, not really. really. Uh, my go-to Ghost Rider uh, always used to be Norman Reedus, right? Uh, which again is another very popular one on the internet. A lot mm-hmm. of people think Norman Reedus would do a good Ghost Rider, and I agree. Uh, but like we were talking with um, some of the other ones getting a little old <laughs> um so i do think however he could work as johnny blaze ghost rider in a robbie reyes story as an older ghost rider coming to mentor right. uh this this newer one 
Uh, but if we were going peak Johnny Blaze, uh, my pick for that would be Jensen Ackles. Ah. I think Jensen Ackles would play a good Johnny Blaze. Uh, or Danny Ketch. They're not that different. <laughs> I, I haven't watched... Just one of the Ghost Riders. I haven't watched much of uh, The Boys, but I, I really, really want to get through it mm-hmm. so I can see his character, uh, yeah. Soldier Boy, is that mm-hmm. what he's called? You ever watch Supernatural? Yeah. Yeah, I have. Yeah. I Jensen Ackles is great. Yeah, Supernatural... He's, he's even better in The Boys than he was in Supernatural. Supernatural is like the most comfort food TV show yeah. I've ever seen in my whole life. Mm-hmm. Like, when Tatum was born... And uh, me and Alyssa were taking shifts of, mm-hmm. like, she would watch, she would uh, sleep from midnight to 8 a.m., and I would stay up, mm-hmm. and, you know, while Tatum was sleeping and waking up every two hours and feeding, I would stay up with her. Oh, yeah. And while I was awake, I would just watch, like, schlocky TV mm-hmm. shows. Supernatural was one of them. Yeah. I also watched some uh, X-Files and some other shit like that. Shout out to the receptionist lady at the dentist today who had a Supernatural mouse pad. Hell yeah. Jensen Ackles is so cool that he's actually... I actually have him twice. <laughs> he, I have really? him for another character uh, in a second. Um, but yeah, so Jensen Ackles as, as Johnny Blaze in his prime, I think, would be really good. Um, I just want to point out one other cool character. Mm-hmm. Well... Not even character. One other cool actor that uh, has a small role in Supernatural, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yeah. As their dad. He's yeah. a badass, man. Yeah. Um, I've never watched The Walking Dead. but Neither have I. Yeah. Like everybody, I remember whenever Negan first came out, mm-hmm. like you couldn't go to a store without no. seeing some kind of, like you could probably get like yeah, he was Negan everywhere. themed silverware. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. But anyways, go ahead. A spaghetti fork shaped like his bat. <laughs> um. But then I've got uh, I got one more for Robbie Reyes. Robbie Reyes is currently the most recent Ghost Rider. Uh, I just recently read his uh, original solo run. Uh, it was fine. I'm not a big fan of 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 some of the aspects of mm-hmm. of his lore, but there's no denying uh, you don't agree with me. But I think Robbie Reyes' Ghost Rider might be one of the coolest looking comic book characters to date. I think because Ghost Rider is already a sick ass design, yeah, and then they just improve. They just not improve, but they they sort of. Oh, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell the people what they did to Ghost Rider's design. They took him from looking like a badass demon from hell that uh, just went to a Motorhead concert, and then they turned him into like badass demon from hell that uh, works at the morgue and just wears like all black. Well, his suit's not great. I'm more so talking about just like the the his head, <laughs> his skull, <laughs> which is like the main part of it because it's it's like a motorcycle helmet mixed with a skull, and like a, a big thing in the book is that they can't tell if it's a skull or if he's like a robot, you yeah. know, which is something I think Agents of Shield really fell flat on because the Agents of Shield had a live action Robbie Reyes played mm-hmm. by Gabriel Luna, uh, mm-hmm. which he did a great job. I didn't watch Agents of Shield, but the clips I saw of him as uh, that character were great. They didn't even try to take the uh, the more metallic, more angular thing. They just gave him a weird shaped skull, like it's a normal skull, but it's shaped super weird to try and like emulate the shape of it in the comics. Does not play well at all, and and completely gets rid of the aspect of people confusing him for a robot, <laughs> right? So, but my pick for if they were to uh, if they're not gonna bring Gabriel Luna back, if they ever do Robbie Reyes in the MCU. Uh, which again, this one can't happen because this actor is coming up as a different character in the MCU. Uh, but I don't even know if you'll know who this is. Anthony Ramos. Do you know no, who that is? No, I don't. Okay. Who is he? Uh, Anthony Ramos is most well known for being uh, in Hamilton. He was John Lawrence in Hamilton, as well as Philip Hamilton in Hamilton. <laughs> um, never, never watched Hamilton. Uh, he, he's, he's a Broadway guy. Okay. He was in Hamilton. He was in in the Heights, both the stage show and the movie that came out. They just brought him over. Okay. Um, but he does have genuine on screen acting chops. There's a, there's a few things he's been in recently that I haven't uh, I haven't seen outside of In the Heights, which the the movie version of it, which he does great in. Uh, but now he's coming to the MCU in Ironheart. Okay. As the main bad guy, ah. he, he's going to be uh, the the hood. I think his name is. Uh, but I just think he would make a fantastic Robbie Reyes. He already kinds of look kind of looks like him, um, and I just I can just imagine him in that role. 
and he can do the emotional beats with uh, with his little brother Gabriel. Mm-hmm. Um, because you know, again, in the Heights and then in Hamilton, he's really good at that that raw emotion. And I don't know. I just I just think he'd do a really good job. I just when I think of Robbie Reyes as a real person, it's Anthony Ramos who I see in my head. Are you looking him up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I you can, recognize I can, him? I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially when he has... His, he, he normally has long hair, but when he has short hair, yeah. it's like total Robbie Reyes. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Okay. So, so, hell so, yeah, so man. There's my ghost riders. My my three my three riders of ghost. You know, Norman was, Reedus might be able to play the uh, horse ghost rider. That'd be pretty cool. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Like the Johnny Cash ghost rider. Yeah. Not, the, not on a motorcycle. Um. Yeah, I was actually hoping one of us would at least be stumped by an actor that we picked, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To kind of broaden the horizon there. So I'm glad you went with that one. Yeah. Okay, so I guess it's my turn. All right, you might not know this actress. Actress. Ooh. Key word. Um, so I told Brett earlier I was trying to fumble around for uh, some more female actresses to you know, fan cast because I ended up out of... I think I have 10 here now total. I only had two uh, women. I don't hate women, okay? It was just, these were the ones that popped in my head. putting them in movies. These are the ones that <laughs> popped into my head. I'm sorry, okay? Um, but anyways, I would like to see Natalie Dyer play as Rogue. Mm. Natalie Dyer, I think I'm pronouncing the name correctly. Um, she plays as Nancy on Stranger Things. Oh, okay. And I'm sure if anybody's listening to this, yeah. they know who she is. Mm-hmm. I think that her character in Stranger Things could li- like as Nancy could literally be, literally be just plucked out, plugged in mm-hmm. to the MCU as Rogue, a young Rogue, and be played the same way. Just give her fucking superpowers. Yeah, because uh, her character as Nancy Wheeler is this like really petite small girl that is. You know, kind of like everybody is like she feels shielded. She mm-hmm. feels emotionally like tore down about yeah. a lot of stuff, but she's actually really strong. Mm. Uh, she's a very strong willed character throughout all the Stranger Things. I really like her character a lot, mm. and uh, I just think she looked cool with a little bit of white streaks yeah. in her hair. Um, and plus, I just would really, I'm really like looking forward to seeing us get a rogue in live action. Yeah, I want to see that like '97 mm-hmm. suit with the. Like brown leather jacket. Yeah, I want that country accent. Yeah. I want her on screen calling people sugar. Yeah. I mean, I, I think she could do that. She's yeah. got some pretty good acting chops. Mm-hmm. Um, There's and, a, oh, sorry, I mean, to cut you off. Well, I was just going to say, I, I think that uh, she's a young actress up and coming mm-hmm. that could really set herself up top. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like you said, MCU just does a good job of finding new upcoming actors. Yeah, and they're really good at that. So that's one of my picks there. There's a there's a big campaign going on right now uh, for Kiki Palmer to play Rogue. Ooh, which I think which I have Kiki Palmer on my list, uh, not as Rogue, but um, I, I love Kiki Palmer. I think she could do it. I think it'd be great. My top pick for Rogue uh, has always been uh, Daisy Ridley. Ah. I think Daisy Ridley could do a really good Rogue. Yeah, I could see it. Yeah, I, I need to I need to see Daisy Ridley in some other stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's she's not in a ton outside of Star Wars. Like in in Star Wars, I love her character Mm -hmm. in The Force Awakens. But once again, I just think that she kind of gets fumbled through uh, The Last Jedi, Mm -hmm. which I I have so many issues with that movie. And also Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. I I, I don't know. I I would just like to see her in more stuff where I could really see what she's got as far as acting wise. Daisy Ridley, we love you. Those movies weren't your fault. Yeah, I just don't think she was given much to work with, no. nor was anybody in those Mm-mm. movies. So, but yeah, Natalie Dyer as Rogue mm-hmm. is who I would like to see. Hmm. I want you to do another one because <laughs> my next one's going to be a team. <laughs> okay. So. All right. All right, then. Well, I'll do another one. <laughs> I jotted down another uh, woman mm-hmm. here. I don't really have a whole lot. Uh, backing on this i kind of i told brett i cheated on this one a little <laughs> and because brett was uh really wanting to do uh fantastic four casting yeah. and i've just never That's been a big thing right now i know i know and i agree and i tried i searched but uh you know I, i've never been into the fantastic four a whole lot mm-hmm. i don't know who would portray these characters really well because i don't particularly know the characters personalities individually mm. and how they act i went with this character this actress to play a sue storm just because 
I think she is an up, another up and coming actress mm-hmm. that has a lot of acting chops and can carry a scene. Uh, her name's Samara Weaving. Have you ever seen Ready or Not? No. Came out about two years ago. I already talked about Adam Brody, yeah. who also played in it. Um, she kind of looks like Margot Robbie. Oh, yeah? Yeah. She uh, also wait, played in The wait. Babysitter. Have you seen The Babysitter yes. on Netflix? Yes. I do know who that yeah, is. She's the lead in The yeah. Babysitter. That's a fun movie. Yeah. It, it is. It is for sure. I, I watched that just on a whim. And I think I liked that it. she is the kind of actress that could carry and almost make, uh, let's be honest, Sue Storm's powers are kind of... I, I kind of, that's another reason why I don't really like the Fantastic Four. Yeah. Is they don't have that. The Human Torch is the only one with cool powers. Yeah. Really. Um, I think I think stretchy powers are cool when they're done well. Well, I think the stretchy powers are the worst ones. What? Yeah. I mean, they're gross looking, but. Yeah, I just think they look goofy. That's why they're so scared of giving them to uh, Miss Marvel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, I think that Samara Weaving would do a very good job of adding a serious tone to mm-hmm. her powers. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, all right. That's a good one. Speaking of the Fantastic Four. Okay, moving on. Segway. This is uh, this is the big one. This is sort of what sparked the idea for the episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, because if you guys follow any sort of pop culture, which I'm sure you do if you're listening to this show, <laughs> yeah. but you know that you know that the cast for the upcoming MCU Fantastic Four movie is is hot hot on the press right now. Uh, we keep on waiting for them to give us an announcement. Uh, they aren't doing it. They're very, uh, almost apprehensive to tell us who's playing these characters. And I don't know if it's because they don't know yet, or, or if they're afraid we aren't going to like it because of how many fan casts there are and how many different just names are getting thrown around and, you know, rumors and leaks. I'm putting quotes around those. Mm-hmm. Um, but here's my take on it. All right. I have, I have a whole roster. I don't just have a Sue Storm. Uh, I do have a Sue Storm, but yeah. not, not just her. Uh, so we'll get started here. I'm going to start out pretty with the grain. Uh, for my Reed Richards, I do have uh, Penn Bagley. Badgley. Badgley, is yeah. that how you pronounce it? I thought you were going to say John Krasinski. I was going to be like, you <laughs> troll. You're the <laughs> ultimate be troll. Funny. No, I don't like John Krasinski as uh, Reed Richards. Sorry. Uh, John but, Krasinski is a good actor, though. No, yeah, no, he's great. I just don't like him as Reed Richards. Copy that. But Penn, Penn Badgley... Uh, is most well known for being Joe in the show You, which is a show I have not seen. I haven't either. Alyssa watched it. But I hear that he's great in it. I, I hear that he he puts on a really good performance. Um, mostly, he just looks the part. Mm-hmm. When I think of Reed Richards in my head, there he is. Penn Badgley just looks like Reed Richards. Uh, and he does have those chops to do that, and it's what everyone else is picking. Uh, and I didn't have a better choice. So Penn Badgley... You can be Reed Richards. I'm okay with that. Not a bad pick. No, no, not a bad pick at all. I think I think he could really do the role justice, especially because Reed Richards is a very sullen, you know, very full of himself character, sort of like what Joe would be, what I perceive Joe to be mm-hmm. in the show You. So he he could definitely do it. But now we start getting into uh, into my personal picks, and these aren't names I've seen uh, for these characters a lot. Uh, for my Sue Storm, uh, what? Oh, oh, you're making okay. Yeah. I, th- I thought I said her name wrong. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm uh, being inquisitive. Karen Fukuhara. Karen Fukuhara. She is Kimiko on The Boys. Ah, okay, yes. okay. Um, I could dig that. Yes, I think, I think. Well, one, she just needs to be in more stuff. Yeah, I think. She's, I haven't watched all the boys. The last episode that I left off of mm-hmm. is literally only like the third episode mm-hmm. since she's been introduced. Mm-hmm. So she's still very uh, feral. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, yeah, well, once once she sort of gets out of that. Um, but no, I just think, uh, well, one, we like to talk about, uh, if you remember a while back when we were talking about the Batman, we talk about actors who can act with just their eyes and, and just their movements. And in her role as Kimiko, she's great. That's all she does. Because yeah. Kimiko is a character who is mute. She can't talk. Right. Um, and so... I, I'm I'm willing to believe that if you can act that well without talking, you can act <laughs> well with it. Which she no spoilers, but she can. Okay. Um and yeah, I just think I think she needs to be in more stuff. I think it I think she could give a very interesting take on Sue. Yeah. Who is a character that, that's not super even even in the in the three Fantastic Four movies we've had, has been either 
Jessica Alba, who was there because she's Jessica Alba. Yeah. Or uh, was didn't need to be there in Fan Four Stick. She was boring. You know, she didn't do much for the plot. Uh, so I think Karen Fukuhara could come in and, and, and really make her a character, you know? Yeah, there's a couple of these, you know, picks that we made that's almost like, we we just want to see if this actor or actress that we have faith in can do the role. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. we have that faith in them. Yeah. So I like that pick for yeah. sure. So that that's my Sue Storm. Who you got next? Going on to her brother, Johnny Storm. Here's my John Boyega. I think John Boyega would kill as the Human Torch. I got that. I we, can get that. We know that he can do the funny. We saw it in Finn, but we know he can do the action, the heroics. I, I just think he'd be a good pick. You just... You just set Finn on fire. And yeah, you just got set Johnny Finn Storm. on fire, and there's Johnny Storm. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, I like I, it. I think John Boyega as the Human Torch would be a good pick. Uh, and then we have my thing, which I told you before who my pick for thing is. It's Jason Segal. Yeah, that's a that's a good pick. Jason like Segal is just, I think, it, you know, he can do the funny. All he has to do is the voice work. Um, and I, I think the thing should be a funny character. Yes, you I know? agree. In the terrible fan four stick, again, bringing that up, that was Jamie Bell, who's not a bad actor, but they didn't play the thing funny. They made him angry all the time. They, you know, he was just the Hulk with rocks. I feel That's like not that, what the thing is. I, I think I feel like that whole movie, yeah. one of its biggest like flaws is just it gave off such like taking itself so yeah. seriously. Yeah. yeah. So I think they I do think they need a comedian in the role, and I think Jason Segal would kill it. Mm-hmm. I think, you know. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know Jason Segal, uh, he's most well known for uh, being Marshall in How I Met Your Mother. If which, you don't know Jason Segal, like he's w- also in the Muppets. Were you movie. just born? Well, I don't know. I don't know who people do and don't know. <laughs> no, no, you're right for talking about. It. I'm just but, like, if there's anybody when you're listening, if you guys don't know who Jason Segal is, get your heads out of your ass. Go, <laughs> go, figure it out. All right, he's great. Uh, but that's my pick for the thing, which rounds off my Fantastic Four: Penn Badgley. Uh, Karen Fukuhara, John Boyega, and Jason Segal. All solid picks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I like those. We just sure. fist bumped. You guys couldn't see it. <laughs> we did. We come to a uh, agreement on Brett's picks. They were awesome. I- I'm a big Jason Segal guy. One of my favorite uh, comedies is I Love You, Man. Mm-hmm. It's him and Paul Rudd. Yeah. Great movie. You need to watch it. It's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Heartwarming. Good stuff. The ultimate bro movie. Yeah. Okay. So... My next pick's a little bit of a troll pick. Um, it's uh, another video game pick. Ooh, uh, Lewis Tan as Scorpion. <laughs> it's funny. I, I love. Uh, That's funny. I, I, I love uh, Hiroyuki Sonata. Mm-hmm. I don't think he was a bad pick. I think that something that they they should have done or could do is make Lewis Tan the next or you know younger it iteration of scorpion i think he is big strong good looking which you don't have to show your freaking face anyway Mm because you're being scorpion but uh he's athletic you know he's played in other action roles and uh i don't know i just feel like here yuki sonata is like 64 65 years old the dude still got it yeah but no yeah he's great he's in i don't know if i told you he's in bullet train yeah i knew i I knew that yeah Um, now lewis tan he was... He was in yeah, Mortal Kombat. And he was... was a wasted character. He was Cole. Yeah, he was The Cole. main character. Yeah. It, that's, that's how much he didn't matter. You didn't remember him. <laughs> I couldn't remember if he was Cole or Sub-Zero. Yeah, you, you could have just made Louis Tan. Honestly, he was basically Scorpion anyway. That, that, that's kind of what I feel they were trying to set up, was for I, him I to that, sort of carry on that lineage. I think that's something they need to do in the sequel, mm-hmm. is... Uh, not to take anything away from Hiroyuki Sonata, mm-hmm. but like you said, carry on the lineage, make yeah. him uh, embrace the uh, what? What is the clan? Oh, Scorpion's clan. The Shirai Ryu. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Embrace that and become the next iteration of Scorpion. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, not not a hundred percent a troll job, but a little bit. Yeah, it, it's just funny because he was already. <laughs> In and, that movie, yeah. but that that is a good pick. It I was think, almost a waste of a good actor. Yeah, because his character I, was the biggest flaw in the movie. That is one hundred percent true. However, I do love Hiroyuki Sonata as Scorpion. So, like, I'm just so pumped up. I don't know how the people that create John Wick just like keep doing it. Yeah, but they have him and Donnie Yen on the roster mm-hmm. and Bill Skarsgård. Yeah, and the, speaking of Bill Skarsgård, 
How about they're making a Nosferatu movie yeah, with him? With him. This guy, like, yeah. It's like, okay, what's he gonna be? The Xenomorph next? Like, <laughs> probably. Like, this dude can play he's iconic a, he's monsters. He's a walking and villains. creature feature. That's dude, their whole thing. He's awesome. Love Bill Skarsgård. Shout out Bill Skarsgård. Shout the fuck out Bill Skarsgård. He, he's also good when he's just like playing creepy humans. He was really good in uh, The Devil All the Time. You know, the first time I Have ever you seen The Devil. All yes, the time? awesome okay. movie. Yeah. Um, that might have been my favorite movie I watched in 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, Bill Skarsgård, the first time I ever saw him on anything, I watched this uh, kind of shitty TV show mm-hmm. on Netflix called Hemlock Grove, and it was it wasn't very good. But uh, if there was one good thing about it, it was Bill Skarsgård. Oh, he yeah. plays as like a vampire, and uh, hmm. yeah, he's real young. I'm not real young, but he's like this was before he got big. Oh, okay. Yeah, this came out like probably eight, ten years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So way before. Yeah, it's a pretty cool movie. Um, do you only have uh, a team I, left? I, I only have a team left. Ooh, okay. Well, I have a team, and then and then the uh, the thing I discussed with you uh, before. Okay. Do you want me to read more? Or do you want me to wait? I have. Yeah. How many more do you have? Four more. Four more. Yeah. All right. Hit us. Hit, hit me with two, and then we'll do the special feature, and then you do your other two, and then I'll do the team. Okay. So, this one is a little bit of a cheat. It's not an actor nor an actress. Uh, This is a director I would like to see direct a Doom movie. You were telling me about this. You said Doom? Doom. Okay. Like D-O-O-M. Gotcha. Rip Uh, and tear. Yes. Till it is done. Uh, Ilya Nasholler. Okay. I hope that's how I pronounce it. I hope that's the way to pronounce it. I know I spelled it right because I copied it straight off yeah, IMDb. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to give me a bit of context on that one. This dude directed Hardcore Henry, oh. and also Nobody. Oh, okay. So cool. my man knows how to yeah. conduct a badass action sequence. And let's be honest, that's all you need to do to make oh, a good Doom 100%. movie. Percent. All you need to do to make a good Doom movie is show the Doom Slayer wake up, mm-hmm. get his fucking shotgun. And be like, what is going on? Yeah. And then just like, okay, you're trapped in hell. Get out. Yeah, and kill him. Yeah, rip and tear. Bring Dave Batista back into the mix. That's my pick for Doom Slayer, which we've talked about before. That, but that would be badass. Yeah. But and that's the other thing. Like, you don't even have to show the Doom Slayer's face. Yeah, you could just have a stunt Literally actor. Just put you don't Dave even need Batista a guy in the the fucking suit. And that's yeah. it. You know. But I would love to see him do a Doom movie. I think it'd be great. All right, these next few were kind of like made up on the fly, but mm-hmm. I still like these picks. Um, this next one's a video game pick. Mm-hmm. You had a lot more video game picks than I did. I couldn't think of any. These are just what popped in my head. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with this actor. I think Josh Hartnett would play as a great James, uh, John Marston. I do not know who that is. Josh Hartnett played in... A lot of stuff. <laughs> he he is uh, really like a late '90s, early 2000s uh, was when he kind of hit his stride as like a teenage heartthrob. But since then, he has already played in a HBO series that was called, or it was a Showtime series called Penny Dreadful, where he was already mm. a, a cowboy in it. Oh, okay. And uh, here, this is him. Yeah, show me a picture of that guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, he kind of looks like. Uh, like if you took Channing Tatum's face and like kind of squashed it a little bit, I think he looks a little bit like a Norman Reedus kind of. I don't see that. He's got like the 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 skinny eyes. But uh, yeah, if you, I'm trying to find a picture of him with a little bit longer hair because there's sometimes when he has like this like long like scraggly hair look to him, and uh, I think he looks a lot like uh, John Marston. He's played in 30 Days of Night. He played in The Faculty. These are horror movies from back in the day. Mm-hmm. He also played in a noir film called The Black Dahlia Murder. Mm. Um, yeah, the dude. The dude's kind of got a uh, dark. He in a lot of the movies too. He's kind of like the edgy bad boy. Mm. So I, I think Josh Hartnett would be a pretty good uh, John Marston. No, it sounds like it. It sounds like a good pick. Do you want me to read one more? Yeah, hit me, hit us, hit, blah, 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 hit us with one more. Ooh, I only got one more after that, though. Why don't I just hit the last two, and then you can finish this off? We'll hit this one, and then we'll do our special feature. Okay. And then hit the other one, and then I'll hit our team. Okay. And then we can hit our, our special, special air feature. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. 
Um, We're professionals. Yeah. Can't you tell that we had a nice pre-production meeting to go over all this? <laughs> um, I think Michael Fassbender would be a badass James Bond. That's tight. Dude, Michael Fassbender. That's cru- really good. Michael Fassbender would crush it in anything. Yeah, you can put that man in anything. But uh, I've talked to you before about his like small role in Inglorious Bastards, mm-hmm. and he has one scene where he just like straight up like whips it out and slaps it on the table because he's such a stud <laughs> like he's just a badass <laughs> well he does he does that in um in x-men origins they're not x-men origins um, yeah first class the one yeah yeah um but he does that in like multiple movies mm-hmm. have you ever seen 300 he's in 300 yeah like this was before he even got big like he I've was not seen it but i didn't know he was in it yeah he was one of the spartans that uh when the Persian army, he had one of like the Persians like below his foot and was about to cut his head off. And mm. the Persian is like, you'll never defeat us. Our arrows will blot out the sun. <laughs> and then he says, then we will fight in the shade. Oh, that's oh, tight. Dude, he's just a bad yeah, That's ass, a sick like, line. Like Michael Fassbender, goaded. Mm-hmm. He's awesome in Alien, Covenant, and in Prometheus. Like, shout I, out Michael Fassbender. Shout out Michael Fassbender. Love that guy. Somebody get that man in a nice tux, give him a dry martini, yeah. shake and not stir. That'd be good. He's ready to save the world. Idris Elba is is my pick for, for the next James Bond, but he doesn't want to do it. So. I, I think he's like a really popular pick. Like a yeah, lot of no, every that's that's yeah. Dude, Idris, Idris Elba also certified stud. Oh, dude, I love I he was another one that I really wanted to find someone for and I just couldn't. I, I want to see like some solo bloodshot stuff. Yeah, like, I think he's. Mm-hmm. I think his suit is so cool. I I know we talked before about yeah. it, but I just love how it's like, you know, modern armor. Yeah. But then he's got like this like skull. Yeah. Like I just love that he can take components off and then put plug them, them on together, the gun. And, like the way it constructs yeah. itself. Yeah. yeah. Really, really cool. Really hope they bring him back. Okay, go ahead. All right. So the special feature I was uh, I was uh, alluding to. With the announcement of Deadpool 3 and how ingrained in our pop culture Ryan Reynolds as the character is, I thought it would be fun to think about who you might cast as Deadpool in a Ryan Reynolds-less world. And I have my pick, and I think it's a pretty good one. I don't know if you'll agree with me, though. Yeah. All right? So I want to hear yours first. Zach Efron. Really? Like, actually? I think he's pretty funny, man. Huh. I, it's not bad. I'm not, I don't want... I'm not, like... Man, that sucks. <laughs> that that's a good. I, I think I think Zac Efron could do a good uh, Deadpool. I, I, I spitballed with some people, you know, and it, it, Zac Efron. It's almost like he's Ryan Reynolds light. Yeah, kind of. You know, yeah. And I hate saying that. It's like when we first texted about it, mm-hmm. though. Ryan Reynolds is yeah. one of the best castings because he literally was playing Deadpool ten yeah. years before the movie exactly even came out. Yeah, so. I, it's very difficult for me. Mm-hmm. That's like, you know, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. It's yeah. so hard to recast. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, I thought of some other ones, but that, nah, I'm just splitting hairs trying to come up with a different one. No, I, I don't want you to rethink your answer. I think Zac Efron is a good pick. I like that. I it's, think Zac Efron would do a good Deadpool. It's mediocre at best, but let's hear yours. All right. Here we, this is this is I, this I don't know if you would have guessed this one, all right? But I I, I stand by it. I I think this is a really good pick for Deadpool. Will Arnett. That's yeah. That's not a bad pick. I whatsoever. think Will Arnett would make a really good Deadpool that in is a, a Ryan pick. Reynolds list world. It'd be a bit of a different tone. He has a bit of a different sense of humor. Yeah. It wouldn't be as Ryan Reynolds just say shit till it sticks. You know who else I literally just thought of? Hmm. Do you know who the actor Ike Barinholtz is? No, that's a sick name. I know. Um, if I show you a picture of him, you'll probably recognize him. He was in the shitty Suicide Squad movie in 2016. Oh yeah, who was he? He was the guy that uh, was a big hunka hunka that like was getting interrogated by Jared Leto's Joker. I'll show you a picture of him. But anyways, go ahead with Will Arnett because oh. that that is a great pick. Yeah, okay. Will I'm, Arnett is also in that movie I was telling you about. I love you, man. Oh yeah, he's in that movie. too. I'm glad you liked it. I was a little nervous. I thought you were gonna rag on me. No, because he's still like kind of a fit dude. Yeah, like, he could yeah. probably whip our asses. Yeah, I think Will Arnett would be a really good pick for Deadpool. Yeah, I like that. I pick. think he's I, even just like the voice. Like I think I think he's got a. If you think about what he would sound like in the comics before Ryan Reynolds made his voice synonymous with Deadpool. Yeah, yeah, he kind of like looks like a voice actor to be honest. Like you yeah. just look at pictures of him. Yeah. No, I like that picture. Yeah, Will Ar- Will Arnett is my is my Deadpool. Okay, so Man, I'm so glad you liked it. I was really nervous. Ike Barinholtz. 
Oh, yeah, the weird grungy prison guard guy. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Remember, he gets uh, kind of like... Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember now, yeah. He also played in... Um, what is that movie? Neighbors. Have you seen Neighbors with Seth Rogen? I haven't seen uh, it, but I know what Zach you're talking Long. about, yeah. Yeah, he was in that movie, too. What else did he play in? Those are good picks. Will Arnett, Zach Efron. That was neat. For sure, definitely. Yeah. All right, what's the next one? All right. Were you done? Did you oh, have... Oh, I had, yeah, I had one yeah, more. One more. Literally right. created on the fly. All right. Like, literally created yeah. while we were recording right the now. podcast. Oh, okay. This is hot off the presses, Hunter well, like, fan not cast. While we were, it, it might have been before we hit, like, record, but uh, I, we were talking about David Harbour. Mm-hmm. I love the goon. David Harbour would David be a Harbour badass goon. David Harbour as the goon. goon. He would be a badass That'd be goon. That'd crazy. Give my dude some nasty, yeah. like, scratches. Yeah. Like... That's really good. He's got the sw- he's got the same swagger. I think he could pull off that like old like forties like kind of inner city oh, accent. Oh, one hundred percent. You know, I I I think David Harbor. He's a unit, big dude. Mm-hmm. I, I think that, David Harbor would be badass. That was really good. David Harbor is the goon. We got a lot of good picks today. I know we're crushing it. Yeah, we're we're doing really good. It's gonna be so disappointing to find out that only like four people <laughs> listen to this. <laughs> dude, honestly, I'll, I'll get into it a little bit at the end. YouTube's doing pretty good i'm pretty i'm, I'm happy Hell with yeah, it man. yeah we're gonna we're gonna do some thank yous at the end mm. uh but here we go to bring us home on our uh famous people as characters <laughs> um i fan casted uh the entire teenage mutant ninja turtles roster i have a whole cast for it i've got all four turtles i've got a splinter and i've got an april o'neill all right and yeah, I really this 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 set and Will Arnett Deadpool were the two things that I was proudest of. Yeah, I think. I, I really like that Will Arnett yeah, Deadpool. Yeah, that is a really good. Pick. I was really proud of that, and I'm really proud of these turtles. So if you if you don't like them, I'll be sad, but it's okay if you don't. So we're gonna start off Leonardo, the leader, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Yes. There he is. Dude, he can just play as anything. That is true. He can do it all. That is true. I mean... There's not much he can't do. Here he is, Leonardo. You gonna do a uh, biopic of Mother Teresa (laughs) animated. (laughs) You want JGL to voice her, he could probably do it. He'd find a way, and he would do it well. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out JGL, he's our boy. Shout out JGL. All right. Donatello. This is one I was really proud of. Jack Quaid. Do you know who that is? Yes, yes. The boys. Huey. Yes. 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 As yes. Donatello. I think it'd be great. I also tried to keep them realistic uh, with people who have backgrounds and being able to voice act. Right? And Jack Quaid he, is set to voice play. He's voice acting? Uh, he's, he's set to play Superman ah. uh, in an animated project for HBO Max. That's cool. So he's got some chops there coming up. And then, of course, JGL, he's done a few stuff. Uh, most recently, he's in that terrible Pinocchio <laughs> as uh, Jiminy Cricket. Um, speaking of Jack Quaid, just a real quick, mm-hmm. like little dip in here, mm-hmm. talking about people we were trying to find a role for. Yeah. I really want, like, I really wanted to find something for Wyatt Russell. Oh, but we're talking about yeah. like, you know, kids whose parents were also yeah. actors. Yeah. I, I wanted to like find something for Wyatt Russell mm-hmm. just cause I think he's like really, I think he could do a good saber tooth. I can see it. I think, that's a good one. I think he'd play with the, a good with the blonde beard yeah, and the hair. Yeah, yeah that's a good yeah. look at you. I'm the cast master, bro. I'm telling you're, you're you. You're crushing it over here. I should be a casting director. Uh, for Michelangelo, we have Shamik Moore. Shamik Moore. Mm-hmm. Not sure if I'm familiar. Miles Morales. Ah, okay. From Into the Spider Verse. Okay. Yep. Good one. Yep. That's our Michelangelo. I don't have a ton to say about these. They all kind of speak for themselves. Yeah. If you know the characters that these people play, you like, know that they would fit well as I, these I can, turtles. I can picture the things happening with Miles Morales. Yeah. Good pick. Yeah. Jack Quaid is, as Donnie is my favorite of the entire list that I have, though. I think I think I really popped off with that one. The only one I'm not super, uh, super like set in stone on is Raph. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have Jensen Ackles again as Raph. <laughs> That's a perfect pick, though. Which it is, right? Because he's, just, but it's he's also, just like kind of a grumpy, yeah. like... Yeah. Tough guy. And again, he has a background in voice acting. He has voiced Batman. Mm-hmm. He's voiced the Red Hood, um, which which is was a big inspiration for him as Raph. Yeah. Because he did really good as uh, Red Hood. Those, those are very uh, similar characters. Yeah. Yeah. So there's our four turtles. I like it. JGL Leonardo, Jack Quaid Donatello, Shamik Moore Michelangelo, Jensen Ackles Raphael. He got his April. 
For April, I have Kiki Palmer. <laughs> Motherfucking Kiki Palmer. <laughs> there she is. Kiki Palmer is April O'Neil. That one would be fun. Granted, that would be such a fun TMNT. Right? That would be so fun. And then for Splinter, I have Hiroyuki Sonata. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like anybody that listens to this podcast just like knows what what things we like because <laughs> like, we keep revolving around the same people we, yeah we have we we have a very set list of people that we like to see in things yeah we have like together like assembled a list of 20 people that we just need to somehow <laughs> fit put, into any movie yeah put them all in a movie together and, <laughs> somehow. I, and like i was telling you at, at breakfast this morning uh, i do not have a casey jones because i was gonna pass that off to you did you think of one nah no no nah. that's okay I thought of other things. Didn't think of Casey Jones. Mm. I have a Casey Jones uh, for our special special feature. Who's that? You'll never guess. It was your idea. It was your. Oh me! It was your special feature. Shh, don't spoil it. I was just trying to do a little wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I'm Casey Jones. You're Casey Jones. Hell yeah! Yeah, yeah, you're Casey Jones. Man, so that's, that's awesome. So those I was are, Casey Jones for Halloween. You were. Uh, back you were. In the day. I think you could do it. Those are my Ninja Turtles. That's my Ninja Turtle uh, cast list. That was uh, I was very proud of that. I think I, I think I did really good on that one. Universal or Nickelodeon, whoever owns the Turtles. Next time you're looking for for a big budget voice cast, you can have that. You can have that one for free, dude. That's great. As long as you credit me in the credits uh, as giving you all of your best ideas. So so I actually had a casting pick for you as well. Yeah. Uh, you might not like yours as much. But I feel like it really fits you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you would be really good as a beast from X Men. That'd X-Men. be tight. Well, uh, because you are a big, imposing character, mm-hmm. but you actually have a heart of gold. Yeah, and you are very smart. Hmm. I just feel like that uh, the way you carry yourself and speak, mm-hmm. uh, you'd just be great as Beast. Oh, thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll just paint you blue and yeah. give you some fangs. That's that's cool. I like that one. That's not it's not a one. That's not one that a lot of people think about. Beast yeah. as a character. I tried to figure out another one because I was like, man, who wants to be blue? You know, <laughs> I, I hate the color blue. But that was that was all I could come that up with. That was good. We forgot to we forgot to talk about it. Hunter had a great idea of us fan casting each other as as characters. So just to reiterate, his for me was Beast. Mine for him was Casey Jones. Uh, I actually had two more for you. Oh. Fuck. Uh, one of them was uh, Ghost Rider. I think you'd play a good Johnny Blaze. He's just picking the most metal characters, but the, and that's great. Well, that's just what you do. Yeah. But then the other one, and you might not resonate with this one as much because you just don't, I don't think you know him that well. Jacob Fry from Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Yeah. I think you would kill. You even kind of look like him. I'll show you a picture of him. Dude, I've played Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. then, yeah. Then, yeah. I, I, I think I've thought you'd about, make a really like, good Jacob Fry. Shaving my goatee and just leaving the beard to have like the little... You know, Jacob Fry yeah. esque lamb chops. Yeah. Get a little scar over here. Yeah. Yeah. Those are so, great. So man. those are this was a good episode. This was fun. A lot of fun. A lot of good picks. Yeah, this might have been like uh my top three most fun episodes. Yeah, no, I was I was really I it was it was also really fun, you know, before filming just to think about all this stuff. Like yeah. to, to get these picks and yeah. like I think of one, I was like, Oh, that's so good. And that was like the fun thing too, is uh, you know, throughout Throughout the last couple of weeks, we texted each other back and forth. <laughs> yeah, we were you know, talking like, What do you about, think of this? What do you think yeah, of that? And, yeah. You know, one that I didn't put down, but me and Brett talked about that I thought would be cool. I think maybe I did say something about it earlier. Uh, Nick Cage as Lobo, mm-hmm. I think would be really yeah. fun. Uh, he's a little uh, long in the tooth now. I don't mm-hmm. think he'd really want to play that. Never but heard that before. Long in the tooth? That's good. I, I heard it somewhere down the line. But yeah, a lot of fun this episode. Yeah, for sure. no, this was good. We should we should do a part two one day when we, we have more characters and more actors become more well known. We definitely will. Definitely will. Yeah. Uh, next episode, we will be doing a horror movie. Have you decided which one? Uh, no, not a hundred percent. Um, I mean, I got a few different ones that are in my head. Uh, it's a bummer though because the ones that I want to watch with Brett, I just know I'm just like I'm just gonna give him like yeah, you were you were saying like, that because I. I I really love certain movies and, you know, I like a lot of horror movies. Mm -hmm. So, uh, regardless, even if it's something that I just gloat about the entire time we review it, we'll still have fun with it. Oh, for sure. So, you said you had a few uh, shout outs? Yeah, a few shout outs, a few thank yous. First, we'll get the socials out of the way. Watch out for that guy. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's coming to get you. It's a a spider just to (laughs) say. You know what to do. All right. Solve that problem. All right. Shout Spider's out time. been killed. Shout out time. Uh, if you want to follow us on social media, uh, our Instagram and Twitter is Real Rendezvous, all one word. 
Oh, oh that's your phone. <laughs> it wasn't there before. <laughs> How'd that get up there? Um, that's R E E L uh, R E N D E. Ooh, man, you really stepped in shit on that one. No, sorry. You're spelling it right. I know. D E S V O U S. Uh, I'll, real rendezvous, all one word. You can look it up on Twitter and Instagram. That's where you'll find us. I've been trying uh, at the behest of Kaylee to be more active just generally on the socials instead of only posting when there's a new episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you saw. I made oh, a yeah. few. You yeah, made I've some been, posts. I've been and trying some to do just a few stuff. general tweets, oh, yeah. retweet some stuff, like some been stuff. Doing good, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you can check us out there. Shoot us some, uh, shoot us some tweets, some DMs, whatever. You can also check us out on YouTube, The Real Rendezvous on YouTube.com, uh, which brings me to my thank yous. Guys, we are almost at 50 subscribers. Uh, we gain about uh, one or two subscribers a day. Um, the What We Miss update episode and now Blade are are getting uh, very steady views. Really? Um, yeah. And obviously, it's not on the level of Punisher, mm-hmm. but I'm not, I'm not too quick to count Punisher as like a, a very good metric to to judge us by because that was definitely a fluke uh that was 100 percent an algorithm thing yeah if you check the analytics you can see which it's it's great that it has so many views thank you guys for watching it for those of you uh who have watched it and and stuck around for these ones really appreciate that and we did gain a lot of subscribers from that episode uh but if you check the analytics on it you know really just a click counts as a view and you can see how long people watch and you know it's like 30 seconds is the average for the Punisher video. But if you're looking at uh, what do we miss in Blade, Blade, I think, is actually up to like 85 views uh, mm-hmm. with um, uh, what do we miss at like around 30. They have much longer watch time uh, ratios and averages. Uh, so thank you guys so much for people who are coming back every new episode, subscribing, listening. Uh, we really appreciate the support. Couldn't do it without you guys. And uh, I'm glad that we can uh, give you something to, to pass the time with. Yeah, no doubt. Thanks to yeah. everybody. That's really awesome mm-hmm. and uh, gets me excited. Yeah. So I guess that's it, Brett. I guess that's it. That's all we got for him. So that'll conclude today's episode of Real Rendezvous. Yeah, fan casts. Let us know some of your fan casts in the comments below. Yeah. <laughs> hit him with, Ho- like hit Brett him with a said, call to action. <laughs> like Brett said, holler at us on Twitter. Let us know what you think. Uh, yeah, we'd like to hear some of you guys' fan casts. Yeah, do you agree with us? Disagree with us? Yeah, who was better, mine or Brett's? And why was it mine? <laughs> <laughs> he is the cast master. I am the cast master. All right, then. We're going to jump out of here. All right. Have a good one, guys. Bye, guys. Love you. Love you.